Hey, what's up, Silver Stackers? Thanks so much for being here. This is Silver Slayer. Now, the conversation of premiums and spot price being irrelevant, and if these premiums will ever start to go back down towards that pre-2020 level of $2, $3 over spot, uh, that's an important conversation to have because whether you like it or not, the silver markets are changing. But I did make a video earlier today sharing my theory on that exact question. If premiums will ever go back down and what that would look like, what it would take. Highly recommend you check that video out after this, but this video is not that conversation, that question. This video is talking about how you can still profit regardless if you are paying these premiums or if you started stacking silver, you know, two, three years ago. So you've only been paying these premiums. And I say that because if you've only been stacking for the last year or two, your dollar per ounce average is a lot higher than someone who's been stacking for four, five, six, seven years or longer that's used to paying two, three dollars over spot, right? Your dollar per ounce average is supposed to be as close to spot price as possible. But a lot of us got in during the Wall Street silver movement or recently, and you're paying up to 71% premiums on some of these coins. So I have a method that I'm going to share in this video to guarantee or at least hopefully guarantee or at least <laughs> I can't guarantee anything, but just to make sure that your stack will be appreciating on top of spot price. So before we jump into this very important conversation, this topic, I am doing a silver giveaway. Uh, we're getting closer and closer to the day. I'm not going to announce the exact day yet, um, but it's coming up. And uh, if you knew what the prize was, you wouldn't want to miss it. Who wants to? I mean, all you got to do is click subscribe. You might be subscribed anyway. So just go enter the, the video if in the video if you aren't subscribed well i post daily videos i do lots of giveaways i also give away an ounce of silver once a month to one of my lucky subscribers just someone who leaves a good comment or just sends positive vibes you know talking to other people if you stand out i'll reward you for that so the difference between a bullion coin and a semi numismatic coin i used to call semi numismatic high premium silver but now even bullion is high premium silver, so I have to go back to the word semi-numismatic. Now, a semi-numismatic coin is a coin that's sold for the metal inside of it, but also a little bit of collectible value, right? A numismatic coin is only for collectibles. It doesn't matter what the metal content inside of it is. A bullion coin is only the metal, so a semi-numismatic is both, like, um, like a panda, like a kookaburra, because the design changes yearly on these coins, right? Because there's lower mintage numbers. And I'm going to share a couple of things to look for in a coin. So you know that that coin will appreciate on top of spot price, regardless of what spot price does. Because imagine this, your bullion is somewhat pegged to spot price. So in, let's say in 20 years from now, if spot price is still $25, essentially your stack could have not appreciated a single dollar if you've been buying at 25 this whole time. Your, your stack is pegged to spot price. Now, yes, premiums are gaining, but when you're paying these premiums already, you know, there's coins that are detached for collectible purpose, and then you just have bullion that is just sold at the metal. So this, this video is going to help teach you how to pick out some coins that are detached, semi-numismatic coins, not just standard bullion. Because there are some things to look for. There's, a, there's definitely a way to figure out how to find these coins or how to make sure that that coin will um, double, triple, quadruple over the years. So first and foremost, when we're looking at semi-numismatic, you have to understand that there's riskier, it's riskier, there's risk involved. Right. And that's because these coins aren't just sold for the metal. So condition matters. Condition matters. Now, if you don't know how to store your coins properly, that's one of the first things you got to learn. Right. The first thing you got to learn is how to determine if you're getting a great price for that coin or not. A lot of um, semi-numismatic coins are overpriced. People take advantage of beginners. 
you know, a lot of pandas, a lot of Morgans, coins like that are overpriced and people buy them all day. So the sellers are always going to overprice them because there's a market out of it. But hopefully people that watch my channel, hopefully the silver stackers in the YouTube community don't fall for that. So one of the first things that I would recommend you, um, you do is get coin capsules or in, in, in you know, tubes or, uh, gloves, anything to protect your silver. Now, if you store your silver in a high moisture area or there's a lot of moisture in the air, then highly recommend you get a dehumidifier. If you keep your silver in a safe, use silica gel packs or tarnish strips. Um, there's a lot of different ways to protect your silver. Now, this only is required for coins where condition matters, and that is semi-numismatic coins, the topic of this video. Okay, so now I told you you know, how to store your silver. What do you look for in a coin to know that that coin will appreciate in value? Well, let me tell you a story of one of my favorite coins that I've ever purchased. And it is my PF70 Ultra Cameo Moon Festival Panda. Now, I knew that coin was going to do good, which has already like doubled in value within like three years, but or 2016. So, you know, five years, six years, whatever. But Man, I've been stacking for a while. Man, I remember when I bought that coin. But anyways, regardless, um, I noticed some things in this coin that ultimately stuck out. Now, PF70 is the highest grade you can go. That means proof 70. Ultra cameos that finish. It's a proof 70 is the highest. So MS70 is mint state. PF is proof. So anytime you get a graded coin, you want to make sure it's 70. That means it's perfect condition if it's a newer bullion coin. If it's older, then yes, 68s, 67s, you know, but if you're getting a newer bullion coin, getting an MS68 pointless because you can buy the raw coin and then just turn it into NGC and it's going to be a 68 or a 69. So 70 is the only type of newer bullion coin I'll buy. But that's not what attracted me to this coin. It was the mintage numbers. There is only, I think, 1,900 of these coins minted. And even a smaller number are PF70 Ultra Cameo. They also have the gem proof version. Plus it came with the COA. So I knew that this coin is extremely scarce. It's a beautiful coin. PF70 Ultra Cameo came with the COA. And it's a panda, one of the most collectible series. I knew that that coin would do good. And what do you know? So one thing you look for is low mintage numbers. You know, low mintage numbers. But pay for the coin, not the slab. A lot of these coins are slabbed, like let's say a 2022 Panda is slabbed as an MS70. They're going to overprice that, They're especially on eBay. You got to know what the right type of coin to buy is. Maybe you find on eBay a 2015 MS70 Panda, maybe a 2010. That's something I'd worth that I'd be worth looking at. But a 2022, um, I just... Okay, here's the thing about newer coins. They're hyped up in the beginning, but this is my trick since I buy a lot of pandas. I'm going to share this with you. Pandas come out at the end of the year, always around the time of the Black Friday, Cyber Monday deals. So if I'm ever thinking about getting pandas or, or maybe even getting a nicer one, especially one that's about to come out, I'll wait until the Black Friday deals. And then I can get a discount Plus, they're the new year, so I don't have to backdate paying for, you know, as the coins appreciated over, over the years. It's a perfect strategy. But regardless, low mintage numbers, the collectability factor, does the design change every year? Like pandas, kookaburras, knowing the mintage numbers of each year. American eagles are minted in the tens of millions. Pandas are 8 million. Kookaburras, 300 to 500,000. If you don't know numbers like that, then you better learn them because you can't just buy a coin, especially a semi-numismatic, and not know the mintage number, because then that gives you an, a little bit of insight on, hey, what's this coin going to look like over the years? Is it going to, be, going to become harder and harder to find? For example, the Lunar Series 2. Lunar Series 2 is probably, in my opinion, the most collectible, highly sought after uh, series. It's a beautiful series. I have a lot of the years and they're extremely hard to find. So anytime I do come across Lunar Series 2, if I look at the year, whether it's like 2014 or the, you know, 2013, 2017, um, and it's a good deal, then I'll take it. 
right? But I have to know if it's a good deal or not, depending on the year. Another example, Morgan Silver Dollars. Did you know that Morgan Silver Dollars were stopped being produced in 1921? Did you know that the Carson City Mint's the most, uh, most sought after because it's the rarest? Do you know how many million were minted each year? Because a 1901 Morgan versus a, a 19, or it's like the 18, um, uh, the first, what was it, uh, 1887 or something like that, that one of the years where it's extremely scarce. The, if you don't know the difference, because we're talking millions of coins some of these years and a lot less, or maybe um, one of the mints like Carson City is extremely rare. We're talking thousands of dollars in difference, hundreds. So you have to know each year how many were minted, which mint is worth what. Because if you just go on eBay and aimlessly buy in Morgan that you think might look expensive, but then you look and there's millions minted that year and there's nothing special about it, you just save yourself from getting ripped off. Or maybe that you could use that for your advantage. Maybe you see... A Morgan on there, it's pretty cheap. You look it up and it's actually one of the rare years and the seller didn't know that. you know. And then not only that, condition. A lot of sellers will up the condition, say it's better than it is because they're just grading it off their own eye. But if you're able to tell, hey, that coin is not really worth a VG plus or a MS64 or whatever, um, that's important. You know, that's why Morgans are probably the trickiest market because you have to know all this stuff. And that's why I always tell beginners, one, stay away from Morgans, especially on eBay. But also, two, just stick to bullion, very simple um, silver in the beginning because over the year, let's say you start, you just buy bullion for a year. It's very, it's low risk. You can touch it. And then over the year, you're starting to learn the market, starting to learn some of the riskier coins. But if you just jump in trying to walk before you can crawl, you're going to fall. So um, so those are some of the things I look for, right? I mean, if you're looking at a series, um, make sure that you understand the series. What year did the series start? Can you collect the whole series? And that's kind of the point of a series is to get the whole series. And then you put it together and you sell it as a set, right? But it, another example, Queen's B series. I remember when those first started. I think it was the Lion, the first one that came out. I started with that series. Now, since I started with that series, I was able to buy each year that year which is cheaper than me trying to go buy the lion from the, that came out in 2017 see if i did that i'm backdating so you have to you have to pretty much ask yourself are you willing to pay that amount and will it pay off cuz not every set in series is going to appreciate and hopefully some of the tricks and tips i taught you you'll know or be able to determine from each one um, if that's a good purchase for you. See, these are some of the tricks that I use for myself. And imagine if someone didn't watch this video and they just go in and just try to do that, right? Some of these tricks should help you. Another thing I, I also uh, look for is uh, I, every, well, here's the thing. Every time I buy a coin, I think about how I'll be able to sell it before I even buy it. If I'm looking at a coin, how, what's the market is it and, and that's why i stay away from colored silver that's why i stay away from like movies because as soon as that movie kind of fades away the coin's not hot anymore um colored silver is a very small market so it's going to be harder to sell right even when it comes to like 20 plus ounce bars i stay away from those because let's say the price of silver does go up to a hundred dollars the my potential customer margin is very small because i could only sell to people that have a lot of money a lot of times liquidity is critical and if I have a whole bunch of heavy bars that nobody can afford, I'm just stuck with all this silver. That's why I stick with like five to 10 ounce bars, a lot more affordable. I'll be able to sell that to a lot of other people, I have a lot of more options. Even goes down to fractional silver or if you're looking at gold, don't go more than an ounce or I guess even, I, I mean, most gold sold at an ounce for that reason. It's so expensive, but maybe don't go more than a half ounce. Maybe get some gram gold bars. Maybe get uh, do a lot of quarter bars or the eight grams. Something like that, right? Always think about how easy it's going to be able to sell, but also look for, if you're going the semi numismatic route, look for coins that you think will be a good purchase. And I hopefully gave you those tips to do so. So yeah, I'm going to wrap this video up here. If you thought this video was educational, informational, at least entertaining, make sure to hit the like button. 
Oh, also remember, you can go to your local coin shops. Um, those a lot of time you can get some good deals there still online. There's always, there's always going to be higher prices. So local coin shops are a great place to buy from. Don't recommend yourself from to, to those places because they go by spot price. So you'll pay $45 for a panda online. You take it in there and they're going to sell it or they'll buy it off you for $3 over spot, $4 over spot where you could sell that coin for, you know, 10, $15 over spot online because it's a semi-numismatic coin, but they're going to look at that more as a Boolean coin. So yeah, some things to know. Hopefully you found this video educational, informational, at least entertaining. Also, make sure to go enter my giveaway if you haven't already. Thanks for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.